Tom Perez's bid for Congress in 2018 has come to a screeching halt. In this special edition of Quentin's Close-Ups, I speak exclusively with him one-on-one. -on -one. Tom, it is so good to see you. Great to see you. I appreciate this. Anytime, absolutely. Well, let me talk about the obvious, and it's been headline news for the past week now. Okay. And this is it, a statement from your website and Facebook page. It says this, quote, For those who haven't heard, I was notified on Monday that I'm being recalled to active duty this fall for a mobilization to the U.S. Central Command, ARO, and won't return until after the primary. For this reason, I have decided to suspend my campaign. Where does your mind go to? Oh, wow. Uh, so it first kind of went to kind of, uh, you know, throwing my hands up, like, seriously, you know, really? Uh, because we, we've encountered a couple of obstacles along the way. Mm -hmm. And kind of the, the attitude I've always taken is something I picked in, picked up in dive school. And um, I always give military references, but when you spend 22 years in the military, that's kind of your frame of reference. And in dive school, the, the, the final test is called pool week, and you swim around a swimming pool, and when you go in the deep end, uh, the instructors who are on snorkel, they'll swim down, they'll tear you apart, they'll take your mask and your snorkel and your, your fins, and they'll, they'll throw you around, your, they'll take your regulator hose and tighten a knot. And, and the whole idea is to, to train you to remain calm in a stressful situation, so if, if all heck breaks loose and you're at the bottom of the ocean, that you can remain calm and figure out, okay, what, what next? How do I fix this? How do I get out of this? And so, each time we've, and I, that's, that training has probably been some of the best training that I've been able to apply toward my life, and this was back in 1998. Yes. And so, in most of the obstacles I encountered during the campaign, I've been able to kind of apply that methodology, okay, what next? So this was, um, I mean, it was really a punch in the arm and punch in the gut kind of a thing. And so I, I had feelings of uh, kind of a deflated feeling of like the wind out of my sails. Because uh, you put so much of yourself into it, and you know that from what you do. Sure. You put yourself out there. It's not so much you're building a widget or a box that you're trying to sell. You're trying to put yourself out there and, it, and asking people to vote for you as a person as well as your platform. And so uh, to put so much energy, both physical exertion as well as emotional and mental energy into something, and we, we drove all over the, everywhere. Right. From Buford, out Monday night when I got the, the news, I was heading to, to Buford to speak at the Tea Party down right. in Buford. And, uh, and it was ironically enough one of my better nights I had. I was very well received down there. And, um, but uh, there was that, there was some guilt because you had so many people that had come on board and right. this was a grassroots effort so you know people who were really on board and had donated money and so then you feel this guilty feeling. Um, but yeah, so I guess the roller coaster of emotions is, is the best way to describe it. And also in this statement you said this quote, lastly and especially, I would like to thank my amazing wife, Ulus Perez, was the person who first got behind me, my first and foremost important endorsement. Tell me, where was she emotionally when she got this news? Well, first, uh, congratulations on pronouncing the name right. <laughs> uh, well, that's, that, that's how I got her to go out with me the first time. I called her up and, and I, I said, is your name Ulas? And she's like, yes, yes it is. And so I, she, she agreed to go out with me because I got her name right in the first try. Oh, good. But she initially, um, she kind of went into kind of just a mechanical, uh, you know, logistics, what next kind of a thing also. Um, and I guess it really hasn't hit yet, and not until, because I won't deploy actually, I, won't, I don't mobilize for a few months, and so we have a little time to, to prepare. Yeah. But the first was, you know, what will you be making? You know, because the financial uh, concerns come in, will I be able to cover the mortgage and stuff like that with my military pay? Will it, will it supplant what I, my civilian pay now is? And so there's that, then, well, excuse me, the first question she asked was, can you get out of it? And my mom, ironically enough, I called her and she asked the same question. Um, and while, while I probably could have, I probably could have called, made some phone calls and I'm, I'm connected enough to probably had to, to done that, that's just not the right thing to do. No. It's just, yeah, I, I, I counsel a lot of young people who are considering joining the military and one of the, the first things I say is don't join the military if you don't want to get deployed. That's our job. Our job is to deploy and hopefully to fight the bad guys over there um, so you don't have to fight them here. And so um, we had to be prepared to deploy at any time. And so now I have to kind of you know, eat my own words, so to speak, and it, it happens. It, 
one of the worst possible times. But it, you know, it is what it is. And so, um, but she, yeah, early on, she was just kind of uh, accepted it. You know, twelve steps, or so to speak. The first one was acceptance. So she's accepted it. This is happening, and now we're kind of going through the mechanics of you know, kind of preparing ourselves. For, you know, getting deployed and you know, winding down the campaign because we've been going full speed at that, and also working at the same time. I, I still have my day job, and so there was a lot of that coordination going on. Um, and now that's kind of come to an all stop, and we're focusing on the deployment. But this is what very this was actually very interesting to me in this statement. You said this quote: cool. "I can't say whether I'll run again in 2020 or any other time, but I will say that I'm not ruling anything out. However, for now." I'm focusing on getting as much family time as I can, preparing to deploy, and getting back home in one piece. Thanks again to all those out there who have supported me in this brief but rewarding journey. Okay, I have, I guess, three questions. Mm -hmm. Not 2020 yet. It's um, 2018. So if you were to sit down with Ted Feeney or Congressman Sanford right now, what would you say to them one-on-one? -on -one? Well, I'll find out here at lunch. I have a, a, a meeting Ted Feeney for lunch uh, today. I've actually never met him, never really had a chance to talk to him, so uh, I'll talk to him this afternoon. Uh, I did talk to Congressman Sanford briefly yesterday. We had a, a, a good phone conversation. It was very you know, polite, genteel. Uh, good, I wished him luck, and uh, he said Godspeed and that kind of a thing. Um, uh, I would, in, an, in the idealistic big picture sense, I would just say just to remember who you're representing. You're not representing yourself. You're representing the district, the, con the constituency. And um, make sure you're doing this for the right reasons. And there are a lot of people who get involved in politics for themselves. They want to do it because they want a paycheck. Maybe they want power. That's probably the biggest reason why people get involved. In, or fame. There's a certain celebrity that comes along with being in Congress. Uh, and they all have those reasons. but. Uh, and I've said this all along, and it, and it sounds all flowery and everything, but I genuinely got involved with this. I, I got off the sidelines and wanted to do this because I've always put my country and my community first, before myself. And um, that's what I would encourage anybody, not just Ted or Mark, but anybody out there, is you know, this, you're doing something that's bigger than yourself. And you're a representative. You're a leader. You need to find solutions. You need to um, follow the Constitution. And what is the government's responsibility in accordance with the Constitution? And there's multiple parts of the Constitution, whether it's the articles within the Constitution, right. the Bill of Rights that right. protects the people from the government, and then, of course, the preamble of the Constitution kind of lays it all out. Look at that and use that as your guide. And, um, but, but definitely listen to the people and be a voice of the people, and even if it means that you may, not, you may be doing something that is maybe politically disadvantageous, but is the right thing to do. And it, more often than not, the right thing to do is a more difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm. And um, But that's why we hopefully elect people of honor and integrity, people who are intelligent, um, well-meaning, who can do the right thing when nobody's looking. Right. And do the right thing, um, even when it, it may be as a sacrifice to themselves. Your supporters, what is your message to them right now? I'm sorry. Uh, at the end of the day, really, um, I, had, I had a lot of. Um, I didn't have any of the, the the big money donors. You know, those were all. Uh, vast, but the vast majority of them were. were well, I'll, I'll say it. They're they're. Um, donating to Mark, you know, they, they like to vote, they're, they're going to donate to the incumbent, and so, um, and I'm not a wealthy man, you know, I do all right for myself, okay. but the vast, but I did get a lot of small donations, okay. and, you know, $100, $25, and if someone's going to write you a check, whether it's $25 or $2,500, that's a vote, mm -hmm. and that is belief in you, because people aren't going to put their money into something that they don't believe in. That especially a candidate. Right. Um, it's one thing to, to say, oh, I'll spend $25 on this box here, and if it doesn't work, oh, well, I can write it off, or whatever. When you donate to a campaign, you really, especially the donation the, from the people I got them from, were people who really believed in me. And um, were voting for more than just an ideal. They're voting for this, a person who encompassed those ideals. And, um, 
So you know, there's a certain you have a certain sense of duty to them, that you an obligation to those people who you represent, who are, are really getting behind you. Um, and so there was a lot of guilty feelings, honestly, after that, because I felt like I was letting people down. And everyone, to a man, has been very magnanimous and just they, they get it, they understand. I've had a lot of people say, you know, money well spent and, you know, use that money in 2020 because according to the FTC, you can roll right. the money forward um, if I decide to run for Congress again in 2020. But, um, yeah, so my message to them is uh, thank you so much um, for all the support I've received and um, yeah, I'm sorry we couldn't get it done. 2020, write the headline for me. <laughs> the first congressional district will be what? In 2020? Uh, the first congressional district, um, it, 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 in terms of like polit political? Oh yeah, what will it look like? Because obviously in Charleston County, I believe last year, they voted for Democrats. Well, for Democrats that is. Oh absolutely, yeah. So I mean the district will still be red. Um, and, and the, um, but I would say it's much. It's, it will be getting bluer. Okay. Um, 2020, I think, because you're seeing a large influx of people from outside of the state moving in. Um, I, I just read a headline, I think yesterday, that now Charleston is the largest city in the state, okay. yeah. and South Carolina, last I checked, was the had the second highest rate of people moving into the state in the okay. country. I think Oregon was number one and South Carolina was number two. And this, this phase is people aren't moving to Bamberg or, right. or you know, Orangeburg. Right. They're moving to Charleston, Charleston. Uh, Charleston, Mount Pleasant, Myrtle Beach. Uh, Buford's getting a, a pretty good influx as well. Right. And so we're seeing this exponential growth and it's changing the dynamics. Um, the district right now is still red. I think whoever wins the 2018 primary right. will, Republican primary will likely not see much opposition to winning the general will probably keep it uh, as a Republican representative um, in the 2018. Probably the same scenario in 2020, but we're gonna, I think we're gonna continue to see people who are either Democrat or at least moderate or independent moving into the district. And um, I'll echo the, the sentiment of Matt Moore from a couple of years ago. Um, I heard him speak over the East Cooper Republican Club, and he says, we as Republicans, we need to maybe take a look at our tone, not the message. And I, I asked him that question, and he specifically said, not the message necessarily, but the tone of the message, to be more of an inclusive tone and not be, we tend to, as a party, and many people in the party tend to be more, you're either my way or the highway kind of thing, and you got to agree with all, with this, 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 and we're very rigid, and... Um, it turns people off, and the whole purpose of a party, particularly the, on the local level, is to recruit people, to get people in, to attract people. And one of the best ways to do that is to be appealing and to show people that um, the real side of, of conservatism and what what we really stand for. Um, and you know, again, stick to our message, but have a tone that is more um, welcoming and inclusive. That's just that's my recommendation. I'm just one guy, but um, I, to answer your question, 2020, I think it'll still be um, a Republican district, but um, on the I don't know if by then we'll be on the precipice of shifting over to a blue district, but it'll it'll it will continue to get more and more purple as you see people move into the area and kind of you know spread out into the more rural areas. Tom Perez, thank you so much for free interviews already for Quentin's Close House. <laughs> Absolutely, it's my pleasure. Anytime. Thank you. Well, I appreciate this. Yes, sir.